What up, y'all? DC Fago guy. And Megs. Well, last night was the Hollow Wicked Traveling Freak Show tour. So, we're going to do a little pickup video, show you guys what we got, as well as drop a little little bit of a review about the show last night. And we thought it would be kind of better to do one together instead of doing things separate because we both got different shirts and different merch, so... And then on top of that, also, Megs did all the uh, footage, so she'll have a vlog coming out on her channel. So all a way the to concert just kind footage of... and shows before the concert is what it is. So basically just a way to help kind of cross-promote both of our videos. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. We'll start, do um, you want to do your shirts first or we want to do them together? I guess we could do our first shirts together since they are the same. Okay, you want to do the shirts first? Yeah, we'll do the shirts first. Well, did you want to talk about these? Yeah, we're going to talk about the okay. Fago. We'll talk about the Fago bottle. Okay, so here is, of course we got the tour shirt. Tour shirt. Here, you hold the front, I'll hold the back. How about that? Dope. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I just like all the little details on the back. I don't know. And you gotta get a tour shirt. You have to get a tour shirt. Especially a Hollow Wicked one. They don't tour Hollow Wicked very often. The last one they did was 10 years ago, so. I have a tour shirt from every concert I went to except for one, and that's the Riddle Box. Oh yeah. We still gotta try to find you one. Okay, do you want to take off on yours, and then I'll do mine? Okay, so I like to say they had a lot of badass merch there, just saying. Oh, yeah. And if I had money, I'd buy it all, but I didn't have that money, so. You know, and uh, one thing that I, I've noticed is it seems like they're upping their merch game as far as shows go. This one really, I don't know, just stood out to me because it just, the werewolf, like Wolverine, and it just, yeah. it just spoke to me, and Amazing Jackal Brothers and the Malenko are my favorite two albums, so I had to get me this one and the back is even better the little hatchet man is like a little frankenstein the franken man <laughs> it's awesome and then i love just the little detail here and stuff and the writing and the we call that like the template or whatever the font the font i just yeah. love it i just think it looks so badass the only thing i had to say was it only had one of them on it and I don't know, it kind of says Jackal Brothers on the back, but then it only has one. Right. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I do like it. And then, like I said, the Malenko is my other favorite album. I had to get this one. It's so cool. It's kind of like Halloween themed. And on the back of this one, from what I can understand, this was the only one like it. The black writing on the back is actually glittered. And it probably won't show up on camera, but... My guess is it's probably because of how the Malenko's hat is. Right, but the front doesn't... The black on the front... It doesn't. Oh, no, it does. It does? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. It's got like a metallic kind of sparkle to it. Yeah. But probably that's my shirts that. that I got. Hell, yeah. And I love them. <laughs> so, the one that I got... They didn't have... Okay, I went into the show wanting like a total of six shirts. I wanted to get the Sanity and Insanity Carnival Carnage shirts. I didn't see either one of them. Um, I wanted to get the Mr. Rotten Treats holding the pumpkin. They didn't have that one. They were kind um, of sold out on a lot. There was, to be honest. There was a t-shirts I found online of two different ones. You had Shaggy and Jay each with a knife and like they had a head that had the top cut off. I did see Jay's but they didn't have Shaggy's mm -hmm. so because they didn't have the pair I decided to just opt out of that. I see that would have been really cool if we both got one. Yeah Because then we could have worn them together and stuff. Um, the rotten treats that they didn't have, they did have this one, so I went ahead and picked it up just to kind of settle, because Mr. Rotten Treats is pretty dope. And then but I'll... I think the back of the shirt is even better. <laughs> yeah, they got Mr. Rotten Treats' menu there, which we'll go ahead and we'll read you guys what's on Mr. Rotten Treats' menu. Okay, you so go first? we got titty nipple nuggets, sugar coated shit chunks, sweat soup. Oh. <laughs> Skeet Skittles. Striped doo doo streaks. Sour Nedden holes. Butt flakes. Crunchy. Celluloid chunks. Ugh. <laughs> so gross. And then you got balls. And then balls in a butt. Balls on a chin. Chewy turd taffy. Finger longs um, dipped in butt. Ugh. Poo cookies. And Susie Q's Nedden hairs. 
<laughs> and then at the very bottom, it just says uh, Hollow Wicked Clown Show in St. Clown Posse, October 31st, Detroit, Michigan. Because they do it every year, so. I love that that shirt, I mean, if someone didn't know like who ICP was and stuff, that would come off like an actual like hot dog stand shirt, you know, where they would have like some kind of character, cartoon character on the front and then the menu on the back. Yeah. And then the last shirt I went ahead and got, just because it is probably my favorite out of the Hollow Wicked renditions of the Joker cards, you got the Vampire Ringmaster. Hella dope. This 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 sucker's gonna light up bright under a black light. Now on the on the back here, there's some other details you can hardly make out. You got the Ringmaster here, but on the top you got, of course, the Franken the Franken Man, and then it does say Hollow Wicked in yellow underneath. Kind of hard to read kind of hard to see. And I think that that shirt should have been neon green. That would have been so badass. Yeah. Because well, it's got, they have, it's like a yellowish orange and they have yellow and orange font on the shirt and you can't really make out a lot like what you were saying. Like on the front he's outlined in yellow but you can't really tell he's outlined in yellow. And then the little orange bats you can't really even see. And then like the back that you were saying, I just think neon green would have been really cool. Well, that's what the riddle box one was. But I think it's awesome. Yeah. It's still, I think they should have just done a different color. I don't know. And of course, they said it was supposed to be exclusive to the tour, so I did pick up the Remaster vinyl. And we I, did uh, um, double check with some different local record places, and we could call them and stuff, and they all said that they're not getting it, it's exclusive. So. And then one other thing I spotted under the display case. Are you going to open it up and show it? I'll do that in my review. Oh. Um, You're going to make them wait for another video. Yep. But they had these awesome lanyards, man. Fearless Fred Fury. So I went ahead and, I went ahead and picked it up. So and it's really good quality. Already got my keys on there. It's really thick material. It's not like a cheap lan lanyard, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what we got. Of course, you have to pick up souvenirs. And one thing I like that they did differently on this show, they actually had different flavors. They had, of course, the the classic traditional diet root beer. They had the diet Coke, I believe. I saw some cola bottles. And then there was Moon Mist, there was Twist, Red Pop, and Arctic Sun. They had a lot of Red Pop. That, I think that was like the big one. And when you have like that Red Pop shooting at you with the lights, it just looks like blood everywhere. <laughs> And people had it on their shirts. It was staining, staining their shirts, like red. And it was very cool because the whole like Halloween thing. Yeah, I think they should do that. They should just do orange and, and the red pop all the time for Halloween Kid. Yeah. But we picked these up because we do shadow boxes for all of our concerts. So we got some confetti and stuff. And we save our tickets and our bracelets. And we put like a photo and shit. You've probably seen it on Instagram and stuff that we post them on there. Yeah. So we got these for somehow we're going to cut out. Because you don't see that too often, you know. That's kind of like a rare thing. Right. Um, so this was your first uh, Hollow Wicked actual show. Yeah. What did you think? About the show itself or like the venue and stuff? You talk about the venue too. I know it's your first time at Pierre's. I this is my second time going to Pierre's. I went and saw Fear Factor about Pierre's six years is in ago. Fort Wayne, Indiana. In case we don't know that, but I really liked the venue. There were definitely a few things I didn't like. Like everything was. I thought it was poorly laid out because the bathrooms are on one end and it's really hard to maneuver. They had like so many. What do you call it? Like blockades put up to to separate like VIP and then this area and this area and this area and it's like it was a maze just to get through I didn't like that and there's a lot of stuff restricted for VIP so that part I didn't like and the other thing I didn't like is there was support beams right in the middle of the stage yeah, I mean, what, why, like why big why, support beams? Why have support beams, man? I mean, no, but they could have moved the stage <laughs> like eight feet that way or eight feet that way. Yeah. So it was a constant, like you know, they're trying to like see and shit because they had more than one support beam. But overall, I thought the venue was really nice. I liked all the seating and everything. I think it could have been better, but I liked it. 
And then as far as the show goes, wow. And I hate to say I'm disappointed with everything, but the freak show part, I was really disappointed. We both were. Yeah. I mean, the the traveling freak show that yeah. they mentioned being the last one, we actually saw one, what, last year or two years ago that was easily ten times better than what yeah. we saw last night. And it night. was like a little theater. It was very, like, low budget. Actually, I think I vlogged some of that footage. I think you did. But it was way better and way cheaper than... So I think because we had that experience seeing this stuff was like really like yeah it, we kind of got bored to be honest during that part. His comedy routine was was pretty good. Oh, the Elvis guy? <laughs> no, no the the guy that came out and hosted the, the little freak See, show. Part. I didn't even he find was, him funny. I thought was it was funny. like corny. It was like I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't like that part of it. The Elvis guy was hilarious. I want to see more of him. I missed him at the gathering. I did too, and I, I went. <laughs> that was definitely. I definitely my, see what people were talking about him being funny. That was my big mess up of the gathering. Yeah, but as far as like the freak show goes, I was very disappointed. Like very disappointed with that part. I mean, the most he did was like put the condom through his mouth and out his nose or whatever. Yeah. It's like you can go on YouTube and find like hundreds of videos of people doing that. Swallowed a sword. And then the other girl, I mean, I don't want to spoil it in case you guys go, but I was just disappointed. Now, the show itself, like with ICP, I was absolutely blown away. Yeah, it was way better than I had even imagined it was going to be. Yep. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I left there, like, my mind blown. Yeah, they, they performed a couple of Hollow Wicked tracks, Mr. Rotten Treats, Halloween on Military Street. Even, awesome. like, the stage decor. The work and money that went into that shit? Yeah, they themed it around the freak show, which was really dope. I hope that they reuse those props, because that was so bad. And I did film, like, them, the intro of them coming on and everything. I got all that footage, and I got... Like, when I vlog concerts, my whole thing is I vlog a little bit of each song. So they're, like, short little clips of the whole show. That way you can be at the whole show without having to watch a two hour video yeah. basically but I was blown away I loved it I had so much fun I yeah, definitely blast and I got footage of the bartender getting hit <laughs> they were yeah, they that, and then the thing is too like they were very held back and reserved with their Fago launching oh, cause yeah. the venue was like half concrete flooring and then half like carpeted and woodwork and the bar and everything so I was like how are they gonna do this they had ceiling tiles and yeah. everything you could tell they must have had a prearranged agreement because you can see them doing more you know they're holding the bottle they're shaking it like this and then finally just tossing the empty bottle versus yeah. there was probably maybe only three or four times I actually saw it get launched but not very far and then right into the ceiling it went yeah they must have had an agreement like you can do the fago shit but only so far yeah but it, it was so funny because the bartenders were so skittish. They were like, yeah, the Fago wasn't even coming near them. <laughs> they would be like jerking and shit. Yeah. I'm like, you think this is bad. You need to go to a show where they're like, let loose. Because this right. is nothing compared to that. Yeah. But it was really funny. And <laughs> to see their reaction, that might have been them seeing them for the first time. Well, they, ICP did perform there once before. But that doesn't mean December. that those employees were there. True. Um, I love the venue. I thought the venue was very nice. Obviously, I've been there once before. I would love to see ICP come back again, and if they've already done two shows. Something tells me they would probably do more. Uh, the one bartender who almost got hit by Fago, he was having a blast because towards the end during the Fago Armageddon, he had the little dispenser for like the different cokes or pops that water, you can mix yeah. and probably water. He took it and started spraying the crowd, so that was pretty funny. He was definitely getting into it. Yeah, I would say. Like, I would be completely content and happy going back to that venue. Yeah. Even though, like, I know I said there were some things I didn't like about the venue, but I would go back in a heartbeat. I liked it for the most part. Yeah. Friendly staff. So, um, the actual show itself, I love that they performed Hey Vato. I'm right there, like, Hey Vato, singing along and shit. Just absolutely. There was a lot of seating. And they even had, like, couches and stuff, too. Yeah, there were certain areas where they had couches, so... The VIP area, from what we could see, was really cool. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, absolutely great show. If you have a show coming near you and you're able to make it, or if you're still deciding whether or not to go, 
I would go. It's definitely the shit. You didn't mention they had Ouija Mac. Yeah, Ouija Mac performed, which I'm not a big fan of Ouija Mac. Walk a Flock of Flame was a special guest for t- for last night's show. And this is like, this is my opinion. But I think that Waka Flocka, whatever, he had more people there to see him than Ouija did. Like, when Ouija was on, I don't know, it's kind of like... There was a lot of people rocking Ouija. Ouija's there were there were either people like completely rocking out to it, or they were just on their phone the whole time. Yeah, I'm like you're at a concert. You know what I mean? Get off your phone. <laughs> Guilty. I was on Pokemon Go a couple times, but all in all, great show. If you have a stop coming near you, like I said, hit it up. I mean, you only live once. Buy the damn concert tickets. So yeah, I had um, work. <coughs> 11 hour shift went straight there and then was going to have to go home and turn around and get up in two hours for another 11 hour show yep. but it was worth it you know what I mean and like I know some people can't afford to take off work but we were talking about it you know if you knew that you were going to die in a week would you go to work or would you you know and I'm not saying like every time but yeah. Definitely. I'm glad that I I went ahead and went, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, definitely live your life. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Special shout out to Ninjamon who kicked it with us for a little bit, aka Torsten Jewelry on Instagram. Of and? course, the homie AJ came over and kicked it from uh, What Up Ninja. He said what up to me. And in quick passing, KJ Riddle said what up. So shout out to him as well. And his girl was there. And his girl was there. Uh, Ninjamon's girl was there with him. What, she, what, what was her name again? Alicia? Yeah. Yeah. So, she was super cool too. Shout out to all the homies that kicked it with us at last night's show. And, uh, yeah, any final words? I just had the time of my life. I had so much fun, I couldn't believe it. Always a blast. I loved the seating and... Yep. When we got done with the show and we were leaving, there was literally a little pond of Fago. <laughs> like, ankle deep, just... Yeah. I was like, I don't know how they going to clean that up because I don't think they're equipped for that. A lot of squeegees. <laughs> anyway, stick around. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have a Ringmaster vinyl review coming out very soon. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Also, be on the lookout for her vlog going up sometime today. Like, right? I got a lot to edit. <laughs> so, be on the lookout for her vlog. The link to it will be in the description once it is live. And I'm going to uh, link your video and mine. Right on. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time.